culture. Brains. We've all got them. Apparently, the brain is one of the most complex and least understood parts of the human body, outside of Adam Pacitti's heart and why he won't let anyone in. Yet, it's not like we could just wish for a smaller, easier to understand brain, because then we'd be more stupid as a result, and therefore unable to examine our brains properly. It's, it's a never-ending cycle. What is it about this particular lump of cells that can create feelings, memories, and consciousness? Well, after years of research, there's more I don't knows about the whole affair than my responses as to why there's human teeth found in my attic. So let's take a look at some of the most impressive and least understood bits about this grey monstrous mess. With this in mind, ha ha ha, I'm Jules WhatCulture.com and these are eight things that scientists still don't understand about your brain. Number eight, how is it so fast? Everyone always talks about the human brain as a super Computer, but in actuality, it's incredibly slow. The speed at which a signal travels through the brain is about one millionth the speed of a signal transmission in a computer. Despite this, you're still able to recognize a face, a song, or even a smell instantaneously, whereas it would take a computer that is technically much faster much, much longer. This seemingly paradoxical speed is likely to do with the brain's ability for parallel processing, but even that in itself is confusing. The problem with running lots of computations at once is that it gives you lots of different results. This is the thing that slows down parallel processing computers, but a brain is somehow able to sort through all of these at lightning speed and produce one single thought, behavior, or memory. Number seven, where does personality come from? Well, in my case, alcohol, but I digress. Rather than saying that you have a brain, it's more probably accurate that you say you are your brain. That squishy thing in your head is probably where your personality is, but what is it about your brain that makes you you. This is all part of the nature versus nurture debate. How much of your personality is decided by your genes and your physiology, and how much is created by your environment? The thing is, your personality must live in your brain, but try as we might for hundreds of years, we can't necessarily tell what a person is by looking at their brain, let alone their genes. Number six, why do we sleep and dream? Sleep is obviously extremely important. Despite the risks and drawbacks of spending a large proportion of your day and as much as a third of your life unconscious, unaware, and defenseless, all mammals, reptiles, and birds sleep. It's clearly vital, but we have no idea why. For a start, there's no real reason why sleep should give you energy. We get our energy by converting it from food, and yet there's no way you could eat your way out of needing sleep. You actually burn through a lot of energy as you sleep, and yet the fact that you wake up feeling refreshed and more energetic than when you went to sleep is something that still baffles scientists. The same goes for dreaming. There are plenty of guesses, from random neural firing to memory consolidation to deep learning. But as far as science is concerned, dreaming is as much of a mystery as it's been for thousands of years. Thank God, though, as in my case, I really don't need to read into why a naked turtle version of my dad is chasing me through a hallway of needles yelling, I must cleanse you! I don't need to read into it, and neither do you! Number five, how do we store memories? Just a quick test. Think back to what you had for breakfast yesterday, or your first kiss, or your first day at school. Where are those memories kept before you became consciously aware of them? Well, much like the hard drive in a computer, memories are physically encoded into our brains. Or so we think. Neuroscientists assume this is how it works because there's no other real way that it could work. But we really don't know how or where your memories are when you're not thinking about them. Scientists think that memories aren't encoded as discrete bits like they are on a computer, but actually the result of different combinations of firing neurons. But we're still unsure how they form in the first place, why some fade, and even how it's possible to create false memories. So it's just another mystery. Number four, are we just computers? The generally received wisdom these days is that the human brain is essentially a computer. A very advanced one, sure, but a computer nonetheless. If this were true, then it would be entirely possible to artificially reproduce a human mind in a machine perfectly. Given the right levels of detail and complexity, this computer would have full human consciousness and be completely indistinguishable from the real thing. However, the instinctive unlikeliness of this leads some to believe that the brain is not computable, and that no amount of reverse engineering would allow us to reproduce it. Some experts believe that the organic brain is fundamentally different from a computer, because its functions are made up of non-linear interactions amongst billions of cells, as opposed to the zeros and ones of a computer. The human brain can compute some things, but not others, and figuring out the difference between them could be the key to understanding it once and for all. Number three, do we have free will? Surely the idea of free will is something for the likes of philosophy and not neuroscience, right? Well, after letting the philosophers battle this one out for thousands of years, scientists decided to have a go, and the results are a little disturbing. In studies that began way back in the 1980s and repeated
updated more recently with the latest technology, test subjects were asked to perform the voluntary movement of moving their fingers. However, their brain activity showed their subconscious was performing the act for them almost a full second before the conscious mind caught up. Some think that this indicates that free will is in fact an illusion and that our brain is tricking us into believing that our actions are voluntary after the fact. Others dismiss this data or disagree with its conclusions, but some suspect that this is more to do with the uncomfortable implications than its scientific merit. Number 2. How does it work so smoothly? One of the things that astonishes lots of neuroscientists is just how smoothly it all seems to work, given that every one of our thoughts and movements is generated by a haphazard collection of electrical impulses. Your brain is a master of illusion. For example, if you clap your hands in front of you, the light will travel faster than the sound, but your auditory systems will actually process it faster than your visual system. And somehow, your brain is able to organize this mad series of events to make the perfect linear sense in your head. Also, consider the amount of precision and dexterity it takes to thread a needle, kick a ball, or even text on your smartphone. There are a vast number of different systems that have to work together in order to do those things, but your brain still manages to string it all together in one smooth experience. How do this? And number one, what is consciousness? This is possibly the biggest mystery of the human mind. What inside the brain creates the experience of consciousness? In the past, scientists discovered the on-off switch part of the brain, an area that when stimulated causes patients to lose consciousness and wake up as soon as the process stops. Yet that doesn't explain what it actually is. The easiest way to think of it is a point where all of the random flares that continuous stimuli come together and form your perception. It's a bit basic, but truth be told, we don't know much more than this. What's the difference between sleep and being awake? We're just not sure. For all we know, we might as well be brains in jars being prodded and poked in order to make what we perceive to be reality exist. <sighs> Maybe that one's not worth thinking about. And that's our list. Got any more weird things about brains that science just can't answer? Well, let me know about them in the comments section below. And then swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Oh, hello there. I'm billionaire philanthropist, not Bruce Wayne. And as you may have heard, we've actually started up a What Culture Comics channel. Oh, that's better. Where you can go for all the comics lists, all the comics news, and all the comics discussion. So go on, go and subscribe to What Culture Comics for loads of amazing comics coverage.